from a boiling kettle, which is just what you need for a cup of tea or coffee. Well, you know, every time you boil a kettle for tea or coffee, there is an enormous amount of power released. Steam. If only you could harness that steam, you'd have the potential for an enormous amount of work to be done. Well, there are machines that do that. We can turn the kettle off now and come back to our tea or coffee later and have a look at a machine that's been designed to harness the power of steam. It's actually a model of a steam traction engine, a very early tractor that might have been used on a farm to pull machinery. Or sometimes they had a roller on the front to roll roads flat, then they were called steam rollers. But they all had a sort of a kettle up front, this shiny silver part. That was a boiler. If I take the chimney off and undo this safety valve, put a little funnel in there, I can fill up the boiler with water. Now I've already topped it up almost to where it needs to go, just a little bit more. And if you have a look through the window at the back, you might be able to see the level of the water. You can just see the water sloshing around in there. It's about three quarters full. Now, I put the safety valve back in place, screw it in tight. So we now have a kettle with a sealed lid. Chimney goes back in position as well. And we need to put a fire underneath that boiler. Now, the old traction engines often had a coal fire or a wood fire. I have a little fire here which consists of little fire lighters, very much like the ones you use in a barbecue. I push that in a slot at the back, which takes it right in underneath the boiler. And immediately, the water inside that boiler starts heating up. Now, it might take a minute or two before it's boiling. While it's doing that, let's think of the problem that you have with a steam engine. You see, a steam engine, at best, can make things move backwards and forwards, just as my arm is moving backwards and forwards. But usually, you want to turn a wheel, particularly if it's a traction engine, you want it to go along the ground. So it's very much like making this plate, which is a sort of a wheel, turn around. How can something going backwards and forwards do that? Well, if you think about it, you need to attach something not to the centre of the wheel, but nearer the edge, off-centre. You can see what I've done here, can't you? I've actually put a little paper clip through from underneath the paper plate. I have a ruler which has a hole in it, conveniently. I can push the paper clip through there, bend it over. So now we have a fixed system. Ruler, plate, and a piece of styrofoam to which the plate is attached. Now once again, I'll make my arm move backwards and forwards, and you watch what happens. When my arm moves to the left, what does it do to the plate? Because of the way the ruler's attached, the plate starts to rotate. Now my arm moves back to the right, now to the left. My arm's going backwards and forwards. The plate is going around and around. So we've changed horizontal motion, the motion of a piston, into the motion of a wheel. And that's exactly what happens in a steam engine. Have a look at this. You can see through the window that the water inside is boiling away. So if I turn this little valve or tap in this position here, it now sends steam up through this little tube into the cylinder at the front and the piston starts moving backwards and forwards. Give it a little bit of help by spinning the flywheel and now you can see that backwards and forwards motion has been changed into circular motion on that little wheel there. The flywheel on the other side is simply a heavy wheel that keeps spinning but so far it's still sitting still because we haven't engaged the driving wheels. To do that, we'll need to put it down on the floor and then push a little clutch lever, which brings some cogwheels into position so that they drive the real wheels, and away it goes. Trundling along the floor, just as the real traction engines would have trudged across the farm, pulling machinery with them. And of course, the same principle applies to locomotives, which pull carriages full of people. There are pistons which fill up with steam and the backwards and forwards motion is turned into circular motion as they take carriages and people along the rails across the land.
know 